Hi, I'm Benjamin Mac Jackson, founder of the World War II Veterans History Project. I started this project in the summer of 2015 with the goal of providing knowledge and inspiration to my generation so they can better appreciate and understand what these heroes went through. My mission is to preserve the memories of the greatest generation. In this story, World War II veteran Charles Konzler takes you back to his time as a lieutenant colonel in the Army Air Corps. He talks about his service in Europe flying fighter planes during the war. He was part of a team who flew P-51 fighters to Sweden and even had a harrowing dogfight with a German plane along the way. Here's his story. Charles Eugene Konzler, a rank of light colonel. Air Force. I was born and raised in Kentucky, but I was living in Philadelphia. And uh, I went in the service from up there. I enlisted and I joined up in what was then the Army Air Corps. I was in the European theater, uh, flying out of England. I was trained as a fighter pilot. Uh, got my wings and commission at Eagle Pass, Texas, in uh, March of '44. After I finished my tour, the Swedish Air Force bought some brand new P-51s before the end of the war. Although I had finished. Uh, my tour, I got all my missions phone. Uh, I was asked if I would fly one of them up there, and of course I, of course I said yes, but I uh, got into quite a scrimmage with a German plane going up there, a 109, and uh, I thought to myself, I volunteered, I said, maybe I shouldn't have done this, get myself in trouble. So I, but anyway, I was able to stay above him and outturn him and everything till I got around and I got a good shot in him. Uh, I know it, I could tell when the pilot was hit because he just, the plane ducked over and crashed down into the sea. So, uh, that was actually my most memorable fight. I still remember it as if it was yesterday.
we took them there to Stockholm, and there was uh, 10 or so of us that took planes up there. And uh, where we were staying, which was outside of Stockholm, I, one of the girls that worked there at the uh, place where we stayed, the kind of hotel, I said, what do people do that uh, or what would I do if I went into Stockholm? We were just outside of Stockholm. And she said, well, the king is playing tennis. He, he likes to play tennis. So my buddy and I, and he was a fellow that I'd gone all the way through the service with. Uh, we went to the same squadron even in the fourth fighter group. We both flew one of the 51s up there. Well, they told us said that this, that this, the king was playing tennis that night. I want to know what we could go see, and I said okay. And so he was playing tennis. So we decided to go see him play tennis, and it was it was in indoor court, and we were the, uh, up at the. Up above where all the uh, bleacher seats were that looked down on the court, we were up at the top. There was a place up there, and for some reason, I think, and I'd never asked anybody for a uh, autograph before. I said, "I'd like to have his autograph," and, and I said, well, go down there and ask him for it. I said, I'm not going to go down there and ask him for his autograph. So, and he said, oh, yeah, go ahead. I said, no. So his chauffeur was up there. And he told the chauffeur, said, here, the piece of paper. Go down there and get the king's autograph, this American flyer here. So he went down, and when he brought it back up, when he got back up, said the king wants to meet you two flyers. So we went down there and got to shake hands with the king. And he asked us where we were from and if we had flown the planes in the day before. Told him we were. And he hoped that we enjoyed ourselves there and everything. And that picture was on the front page of every Stockholm newspaper the next morning. I've been back since then and I've got picture shaking hands at the present day King of Sweden. So I got pictures shaking hands at two different kings of Sweden, which so many people have. <laughs> that, that, was, that, was, uh, that was quite an experience, it really was. I was awarded the Air Medal with, I think, seven Oak Leaf Clusters which is like being awarded again, you know. Uh, then you get uh, oh, that's, that's, that's the main medal I ever got. I never get the Distinguished Flying Cross, which uh, I wish I had, it, but I didn't. But that's still all right. I do have photographs, that's one thing I always uh, took. I took pictures and always had a, I didn't take a camera with me on the missions because you didn't want to 
you got shot down or had to jump out of your plane, you know, or something, you didn't want to lose that. So, but I always had a camera. There's one thing I'd take, I took a lot of pictures and uh, uh, I'm glad I did because so many people didn't. Came here to Claremont in, in 45, right out of the war, came here and an older brother and I went into business. And essentially I've been here ever since. Since I stayed in the, in the service, now I went ahead and got out, but I stayed active in the reserve. Then I was called back in during the Korean War and spent two years back in there then. It gave me more respect for men in the military, especially the ones that have been in combat. So, yeah, I have a different outlook on it, but it's good. I think I'm a better person from it. I really do. I uh, understand a lot of things that I even didn't even think of before. And I know more about what people have done to get us this far and what a great country we have to live in. And I'm proud of this country. Very proud of it for knowing a lot of the people and know what people have sacrificed to get us this far. I'm enjoying the things so many people have fought and died for. Most of World War II guys are gone now, and so there wasn't, wasn't too many of us, still not too many of us left. It's, it's fewer every day. Mr. Konzler is 93 years old and currently resides in Claremont, Florida. To learn more about the World War II Veterans History Project, please visit our website at www.veteranshistoryproject.com. We look forward to seeing you again for more exciting stories from the greatest generation.